Well, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to A Therapeutic Edge. I have got something on the table that is uh, interesting and silly and far too expensive, and yet I really, really like it. Now, <laughs> so what is this? Well, this is a factory version of a custom knife. This is the Todd Bag War Junkie Citadel, and it yells War Junkie at you from the blade. Um, I have a thing for Todd Bag knives. I, I do. You guys know this. I really, really like Todd Bag knives. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. Um, and I like sort of the silly, I don't know, funkier stuff more than I wish I did, but here we are. Um, I'm gonna do a review of the Field Marshal here this week as well. In fact, this is a Todd Begg week. I'd had one of these before, I'm doing another one. Um, yeah, let's let's put the, these away. This is um, a new maker for Todd. Uh, this one is the Glimpse 7.0. This was made by Wii about nine years ago. Uh, this of course is the um, Sun Tzu edition of the Quaken, uh, made by Riot. Riot has been his maker for a long time. However, now he has branched out and he has decided to work with Artisan. That's right, Artisan Knives. And this is, well, this is a really interesting piece for Artisan to have made. Now, we'll get to this in a minute, but Artisan showed a long time ago that they can make excellent knives. I mean, the proponent is one of my favorite monsters in a number of years, right? You have, and then of course there's, there's the Ferrum Forge. This is the Valor, right? But older stuff, like they're, oh wow, that is filthy. That's what you get when you use your knives. Anyway, look, Artisan has for a long time shown us evidence that they can, make, this by the way is probably one of my knives of the year. I mean, this thing is amazing. Um. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, Artisan has shown us repeatedly they can make fine, excellent knives. Um, this is something else. Uh, let's get the um, the 450 pound gorilla out of the room first. This is $450, and that is so much money. Uh, but, you know, Todd Begg stuff runs like that. Um, his Steelcraft stuff was 460. Um, you know, 400, 400. It, it, it's not excessive for a Todd Begg knife. And if you want the custom version of this, and I don't have one, although I might have one coming in to review, but I'll post a, a link to a video from my buddy Dirk Warning, who did this knife against the full custom. Um, those are two grand, and they're not that different. <laughs> now, I have, when I posted some pictures of this, there were some people that made note that it is sort of gas station-y. It is a very fanciful knife. I will not deny that. But holy crap, is this thing a fantastic monster. <laughs> and Artisan absolutely slayed the build. It is... It's just amazing. It is S35VN with carbon fiber inlaid into the blade, right? I got a little bit of oil on there. I do tend to take care of my knives and that does show. Uh, it is carbon fiber married into the titanium, which is polished and then it is milled. It is titanium liners, which have been anode out this sort of purple blue. It is a titanium pocket clip with a very Todd bag, um, you know, sort of traditional Todd bag clip. He really does like the ceramic ball on the clip. Not everybody does, but he does. Uh, it is really, really thick. Uh, it's broom handle thick through the handle, which is interesting. It is a very thick slice of S35VN. In fact, uh, the proponent, the full-size proponent here, actually has just about the same thickness of S35VN. 
so it is a monster bit of knife. Is this for everyone? Absolutely not. There are people who are going to look at this and say, that's terrible. And I, I'm not going to argue with you. But as someone who collects Todd Begg stuff and really likes his design aesthetic and really enjoys the sort of weirdness that he brings to the table, this thing is amazing. It really is. Do I wish it wasn't $450? Yeah, of course I do. But that's where we're at, gang. All right, let's take a look at what you get with the War Junkie Citadel. First and foremost, the action is superb. As I mentioned, the folks over at Artisan absolutely slayed this build. It is gorgeous. Uh, there is no gaps. There are is no. There are no gaps between this really thick tie back spacer and the liners. Uh, there are no gaps in the carbon fiber. Um, there is no weird spacing. Everything is lined up perfectly. It is, of course, running on bearings. The action is, as I mentioned, really good. The blade is heavy enough that when you snap this thing open, it kicks in your hand. Like you, I shook the table. Like it rocks when you open it. Comes to a very, very nice edge. This is a very slicey tool. Um, I love this thing. And I didn't when I first saw it. When I first saw pictures of this come up and everybody's like, oh, you know, you love Todd Begg. You need to get a war junkie. I was like, no. It's too expensive. It looks this way. But then I made the terrible mistake of handling this thing and went, yeah, okay. Who needs two kidneys anyway? <laughs> I'll eat ramen for a while. So let's take a look at what you get with the uh, War Junkie Citadel here. Um, lining it up there, you get just under three and three quarters inches of cutting on four inches of S35VN. Grip area from behind that very prominent choil is four and a quarter inches, so there's lots of knife. The knife overall, from tip to tail, is nine and an eighth. This is a big knife, no question. Closed length on the citadel here is one, two, three, four, five and an eighth inches. And the in-the-pocket profile, this way, we'll line it up like that, right? Your big flipper tab, we're talking about over an inch and a half, but that's not where this knife really stands out. No, it's this way. And by comparison, here it is next to a full-size grip. It's a fingerprint magnet, by the way. Uh, the grip is so much thinner. Everything is thinner than this. Even stuff like, I mean, look how much... <laughs> It's ridiculous, and yet I love it. It's it's very thick through the handle. That does a couple of things. One, uh, you know it's in the pocket. Like, you're never going to not know you've got this thing in the pocket. But because of the relatively deep carry, and the way this clip is designed, and because of how smooth it is, it's not an uncomfortable carry. It's just really... Thick. How thick is it? I usually do the measurements at the end, but I'm going to do it right now. Are we zeroed? Yeah, we're zeroed. Okay, so right here through the thickest, this thing is 16 millimeters, which is well over a half inch. Right? So in the open position, at the thickest point, this handle is just an inch. So... Is that right? Yeah, almost almost three quarters of an inch this way. It's an inch this way. It is like holding on to a broom handle, but not in a bad way. Because of the shape and the squaring off through here, it's indexed into your hand in a very, very good way. Like there's no, it doesn't feel like it's gonna rock or rotate. If you ever watched Forged in Fire, they're always talking about the way a knife handle indexes into your hand. And for all of the mass here, this thing sits into your palm, no hot spots. You can feel the clip, but it's not aggressive or anything. This thing indexes into your hand in a really, really confident way. So you can, because it's got this beautiful clip point, you can do draw cuts with it, you can do slices with it very comfortably, and it just lands in your hand in a very good way. It is a little tail heavy because it's got this big, thick backspacer, but that just makes what is a really big knife feel almost quick, if that makes any sense. 
yeah, I don't know. I'm a fan. I admit it. I'm just a fan. Let's do some size comparisons while we've got this monster on the table. We had the grip out a minute ago. Here it is against the full-size grip. Uh, as you can see, it is, it's just a big knife. But you know what? Let's compare it against things that are similar in price. So here it is against the Onumzon, which is about 500 bucks. It is a monster compared to the Onumzon. Here it is against the Fox Knives Eastwood Tiger. Um, these knives are very similar in overall size. Uh, this is considerably thinner through the handle, but you're at about 400. This is 450. This is 408, I think. Um, and finally, here it is against a, well, this was $400 as well. This is the Hornet 2 by Tepe Designs. This one is one of a special run of about eight. This one is in that beautiful lava flow fat carbon. Um, you know, these knives actually resonate. Well, to be fair, so does the Field Marshal. None of these are knives for people who just want a pocket knife. They just aren't. And I get that. If you just want a pocket knife, your choices are endless. Now, this is achieving a level of sort of ridiculousness that is much more about collecting a maker's design aesthetic or collecting a, a brand if you're into that sort of thing. Um, I mean, let's face it, there is nothing about the Chris Reeves Sebenza really that makes it worth $500 as opposed to any number of other titanium and in this case S45VN uh, bladed knives, but it's a combination of the fit and finish of the knife, and it is excellent on this, the name, and the overall aesthetic. You have to really want it. And that's no less true with the Citadel here, with the War Junkie. Um, on the other hand, if you are someone who's into Todd Begg and you cannot afford the really excessive price for the full custom War Junkie, then there's this. And it allows you to have, I mean, the, the custom version is recurved, but beyond that, based on the videos I've watched, and I trust my buddy Dirk, beyond that, the differences are very, very slim. Uh, it's a little bit like the Cold Steel AD series, the 8015 and the 8010. Those are factory versions at an extremely lower price than you can get the Demco AD10 and the AD15. Those are $800. The, you know what I mean? So you're... You're still paying a lot of money. You're still, but you're, anyway, you get what I'm saying. It is expensive, but if you wanted the custom version, you'd be paying a lot more. And I'm happy with what I have. Do I recommend this knife? Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, I can't. I can't say, yeah, you should definitely run out and get one of these because it's just not that kind of a knife. But, I mean, look at the swedge through here. Everything is perfectly done. Everything is inlaid beautifully. But if you were interested in the custom version of this knife but couldn't afford it, then this is for you. And that's why it's for me. I could never afford one of the... I can't afford a... I, oh, I could. I mean, I could sell a huge portion of my collection and get a custom Todd Bag knife. I mean, I have... One of his mid-tech glimpses. But even this, right, is, you know, six, seven hundred dollars. His full custom version of the glimpse is two grand. Like, I, I just can't do that. So I do this, and I'm happy about it. Um, yeah, I'm going to weigh it. <laughs> I'm just curious. I bet this thing, it weighs an absolute ton. Uh, but again, this isn't that kind of a knife. You don't buy the War Junkie Citadel here because you're looking for a lightweight everyday carry. You buy it because it is exactly what it says it is, a ridiculous chunk of aesthetic and design brought to life beautifully by the folks at Artisan. But let's go ahead and weigh it anyway. It weighs 7.8 ounces, which is a lot. I think that the... Yeah, it is an ounce heavier than the Eastwood Tiger here. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of knife. 
It really, I mean, look at that tail. <laughs> I don't know. Being a knife collector is a silly and stupid activity. I'm not saying you are if you do it. I'm saying that just as a thing, it's just nuts. Let's bring out the uh, magic ever so accurate calipers. I'd like to know how much blade steel that is. So in inches, oh yeah, it is 183 thousandths of an inch, um, which in millimeters is 4.77 millimeters. It's almost five millimeters thick right here at the thickest. By way of example, the giant that is the proponent yeah, it's the same blade stock. It's 4.7. I mean, it, this is one of the biggest, most monstrous knives I own, and I love this thing so much. Um, this is, yeah, they're about the same. That's interesting. So if you have held a full-size proponent, even in the DT, even in the more budget-friendly, then you will absolutely understand what it's like to hold on to the Citadel here. There is a certain... I don't know, sense of firmness, of solidity that goes with a knife that is this big, that is just hard to imitate in any other way. And the Citadel here absolutely has that. So anyway, this is the Todd Bag War Junkie Citadel made by our friends at Artisan Knives. It has a big old lanyard hole, too, by the way, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, it is not ambi, the clip is one side only. And I love this knife. And I don't expect you guys to. <laughs> I don't. Um, but maybe you do. And if you do, they are out there. They're a little harder to find than I would like. But uh, maybe there will be more. I don't know. In the meantime, I am exceptionally glad that I have one in the collection. And I hope you've enjoyed this look at what is just sort of an awesome and ridiculous piece of cutlery. Thank you so much for watching. I'll post links to Artisan and to various other places where you might be able to find one if you're lucky. I don't know. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this has been the Todd Begg Designs War Junkie Citadel made by Artisan. I have been a therapeutic edge and I really appreciate you. Have a great rest of your day.